moving on into some other news here. The Russians here, this is on a Russian language uh, news site right here. Uh, this is uh, ruvesna.su, uh, which is uh, for the Soviet Union. You're seeing here pictured on here. This is these. This is uh, the article is actually speaking about the uh, Russian special forces. It looks a lot like the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Navy SEALs or, or something like that. Actually, in combat, these guys here pictured in the screen here are in Palmyra, Syria, uh, and they actually have come in there to help push back bringing in and also directing the Russian precision airstrikes on ISIS inside Palmyra. And so the, uh, the ISIS, uh, as of uh, to, uh, today, have been pushed back out of Palmyra thanks to the Russian uh, special forces there working along with the Syrian army to push them out of there and, of course, the uh, Russian Air Force. Uh, very serious situation, too, by the way, going on over there in uh, Syria because... There is so much propaganda coming out of Syria that it's just not even funny. When I say propaganda, not that it is uh, Russia, but it is more perpetrated by the Western media as we've been sharing here with you. And it is growing daily. I mean, unbelievable, unheard of amount of propaganda uh, trying to justify uh, or trying to say that the Russians and Syrians are, are going overboard in what they're doing. In fact, President Bashar al-Assad was in an interview on RT uh, stating that uh, it's kind of funny that the West is saying that the Syrians are doing too much to get rid of the terrorists. Well, the only reason the West is saying that is because the West is backing those terrorists that uh, the Assad government, uh, uh, President Bashar al-Assad for the Syrian government is, in, along with uh, rest, Russian President Vladimir Putin, are pushing back there. Uh, anyway, moving on, though, th this is a little something a little different here I wanted to share with you, and that is, uh, of course, uh, you may be aware of this already, U.S. Marines ground all Osprey in Japan after a crash. Uh, the Osprey crashed there just off in the waters there. Uh, uh, that seemingly kind of a little bit odd there. Um, by the way, I have my dates off there. I forgot there. And when it came to Palmyra, that was actually liberated by the Russians a couple of days ago. Uh, I got, got two different things. I got, I, got, I got the 12th written on the board and behind me. And by the way, something that I've been asked to do many times and I've not done as of yet. So let's get this going for the first time tonight. It is December the 14th. Uh, Great, Steve. You finally got, finally started bringing that out. People have asked me to do that. December 14, 2016. I'll try to start remembering to do that at the beginning of the broadcast. Uh, anyway, on Fox News, many other uh, news agencies many hours ago have already reported this. Fox picked this up about five hours ago uh, about the U.S. Marine Corps' uh, Osprey that crashed there in uh, just uh, on this one of this off of uh, Okinawa in Japan. Now, I'm bringing this up because we've seen a string of crashes all throughout uh, especially, especially military aircraft. Uh, we've seen Russia lost two uh, uh, fighters uh, trying to land on the uh, Kushnov there in, in the Mediterranean. Uh, according to theirs, both one, one of the fighters skidded off the runway, another one was because of the broken cable, uh, the broken, or the broken cable broke and he skid off the runway. The other one was trying to get to the, to the, uh, to the aircraft carrier to land, but they were still trying to repair the carrier and he ran out of fuel and crashed. Those seem a little bit more obvious as far as that, but then I began to notice that a lot of NATO planes have been going down and you can't help but wonder why. You know, we always have the old saying, yes, things come in threes, but we got a lot more than three right here. We've got this one here, the Osprey that has crashed. We have the US F-16, uh, that crashed off in Japan as well. So two crashes there right near Japan. We have a Turkish F-16 that crashed. Now, if you notice, he's kind of smoking there, according to uh, the photo that Sputnik put out. Uh, I'm going to jump over one here because I'm going to come back to it in just a moment. And then we have the Israeli uh, F-16 that crashed recently. Um, I say recently, back in October. Uh, a little bit further back than the others there. But this is four different aircraft, three F-16s and one Osprey that have crashed then it has only made me wonder, why are we seeing all these crashes, especially with the American ones? Now, I know that there's all kinds of things that could happen. Maybe they are really technical difficulties, etc. And I'm not going to say they are or not. But when it comes to the Turkish F-16, they were the Turkish government said it was technical difficulties. 
But very interesting article came out here, and this is on Ayelina uh, Kalik, uh, her particular uh, Twitter page there, breaking the PKK's armed wing, the HPG, says it downed the F-16 Turkish fighter jet uh, over Diyarbakar on Monday. The deputy, uh, deputy prime minister said it, was a, said it was a technical issue, but they actually claimed that they downed the plane. Now, the HPG PK's armed wing statement uh, and let me just back this down where we can see this a little bit better here. In English, claiming responsibility for the F-16's Turkish warplane crashed on Monday called a technical issue. Now, this is the press release that they actually stated here on, uh, well, today, Wednesday the 14th. It says on uh, the 12th of December, 2016, in 1930, an F-16 warplane on the Turkish state taking off from the uh, Diyapa Bakir, I can't say the name right, 8th Main Jet Based Command and carrying out bombardment in Kurdistan has been targeted and downed by one of the guerrilla units. The F-16 warplane which was downed was directly hit consequently and fell to pieces. Now they're not saying what type of weapon and I looked at another, uh, another statement by them on this as well but it was a special type of weapon that they're using that downed this plane. That really makes me wonder what did they use to actually target the plane. And then again, I drop, jump back to the, to the ones here on the United States, the F-16s. You know, supposedly, uh, you know, it's not clear what caused the crash at this time, but the U.S. Air Force said it is preparing to release a statement about the pilot's rescue. The Air Force pilot had taken off from uh, Miswa Air Base in uh, Amori at 11.30 and was headed towards North America when, he cra when the crash occurred. Now, you cannot help but wonder if there's not a little bit of cyber warfare going on on technology. Uh, and, of course, I'm not going to throw Russia under the bus on this. Anybody that might know anything right now, that there is a lot of tensions between China and Russia, not Russia, but China and the United States, especially after Donald Trump called the Taiwanese president, kind of really infuriated uh the, the Chinese, and now there is a big rift between the Chinese government and the United States, and very serious one, in fact, over, uh, as the U.S. is saying now, it is a militarized island, and the U.S. is getting ready to challenge China. Now, you want to talk about erupting a war, you can't help but wonder, what in the world is in the psychology of the Obama administration and their generals trying to not only incite a war with, uh, the, with Russia, but now trying to incite a war with China? I mean, what is this, a suicide pact or what? Or do they just really think they can win a war and they just want to take them out? I kind of wonder sometimes myself if the United States government is not kind of trying to pick a war with China in order to maybe kind of get rid of their debt issues that they have with China. After all, China is carrying the, the bulk of the U.S. dollar debt as it is. So, well, what better way to get rid of your debt than destroy your debt holder or, you know, your debt carrier? That's a novel idea, isn't it? Well... I don't think it's very good, but my point is in this, what I've been considering here, and this is only a personal observation with American planes going down, is that I remember some time back, a friend of mine told me, said, if a war ever broke out between the United States and China, it would put America in a very compromising position. Because after all, all the uh, computer technology inside the F-16s, etc., or supposedly Chinese software. Well, China wouldn't have too hard of a time of hacking that, which could easily cause their planes to crash. Maybe China is playing around a little bit just to see if they can't uh, really do just that. Uh, none, nonetheless, uh, from what I understand, none of the pilots were killed in this particular case, unlike the Israeli crash back in October that killed one of the pilots after making a bombing raid on Gaza. Uh, so anyway, moving right on, uh, another one here. I wanted to share this with you because I just thought this was very fascinating video here. This is in Russia. It's actually, from what I understand, uh, December waves in Sochi, Russia are no joke. Let me just share with you just for a moment here. I think it's kind of interesting to see just the impact of these waves here. Take a look at this here. Those are some big waves. 
And of course, no, they're not tidal waves, but the way they've come over and rushed right up to the hotels. I don't think I want to be in Sochi right about now. That's a lot of water. Like I said, nothing really like a uh, tidal wave or anything, but I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll be posting these, uh, everything we're using here in the links below. Anyway, White House. Another interesting thing that's really going on in America, I don't get too much in American politics, but it, it is worth mentioning here, the White House. Trump obviously knew Russia's hacks were benefiting him. This is a major campaign going on right now by the Obama administration. It is the most unprecedented uh, event I have ever seen in political history, and that is to try to undo uh, Donald Trump's uh, win in the election. Never seen anything like this before in my life, and I've never seen Russia blamed for things as much as I, I'm seeing as of right now. Which kind of reminds me of something, something I'd like to share with you guys here as well. And that's, um, uh, <laughs> this was, uh, Tom sent me this uh, photo here on Twitter here. Let me see if I can get it big enough for you guys. I, I really want you to be able to see this here. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if I can get it to go over or not here. Let me just get it brought down just a little bit here. The Russians did it. Little boy there with a marker drawn all over the bathroom walls there, sitting on the toilet and saying the Russians did it. That's just about the case it is. That's the way the, the, uh, the Democrats are doing in America. The Russians did it. Pretty much everything is blamed on, being blamed on the Russians. Tom, thank you, brother, for sending that to me as well. And uh, just kind of closing out here, very serious situation here. Sputnik News brought this out here. A large oil leak in North Dakota confirms water protectors' fears. Uh, North Dakota, they spilled 176,000 uh, gallons of crude oil beginning December the 5th. Report of the North Dakota Department of Health, some 130,000 gallons of spill have entered the nearby Ash Cooley Creek, which connects to the Little Missouri, a tributary of the Missouri River. Uh, you wonder why the, uh, the Indians there of, uh, of the Dakotas there have been so hard against the the pipelines, etc. And I'll tell you what, they might say it's an accident, but you know, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if things are not done intentionally, maybe wanting to say, pay someone back. I stand with the American Native, the, Nat the Native American Indians there, and they're right to the land that they have, and I, I wish they had more land personally. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. See you back here in about, oh, maybe about, let's see, what time is it now? It's about, it's about 11 p.m. our time now, so we'll be seeing you back here in about 10 to 12 hours. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.